83 season was disappointing to a degree because we had won a national championship in 82 and there were a lot of high expectations, but we didn't have our quarterback situation straightened out early and I'll take the blame for that. I didn't make a decision early enough uh, uh, between Doug Strang and some other people who were, were competing in. And we had to open up with Nebraska in the kickoff classic. First time that game was, had been played, uh, Nebraska had felt that when we beat him in 82, that uh, maybe there had been some questionable uh, official calls. I think Nebraska felt they were a better team than we were in 82 and that they had lost the national championship because the officials had given McCluskey a catch that he didn't have and what have you. And they, they were ready to play, and they really demoralized us. They, they beat us 44-6 to six or something like that, and uh, it was just it was a terrible experience to go through. And I, it took us a while to recover from that. It really did. Twelve days later, the Cincinnati Bearcats shocked the Lions 14-3. Penn State used three quarterbacks and committed five turnovers. We lost to an Iowa team in a high-scoring duel, and a lot of people didn't realize how good Iowa was that early in the year. Penn State freshman D.J. Dozier rushed for 102 yards against Iowa. The following week at Temple, he gained 107 as the Lions finally got into the win column with a 23-18 victory. And at Rutgers, it was Dozier rushing for 196 yards in a 36-25 win over the Scarlet Knights. First down, 10. Dozier. He breaks it. 40. He's gone. No one will catch him. 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. D.J. Dozier. 50 yards and a touchdown. I'm constantly having to watch the words I use when I talk about freshmen being eligible to play. Basically, I don't like freshmen playing, uh, but I, then I get it, I have to go back to the Kenny Jacksons and the, and the Kurt Warners and certainly and Jimmy Suffalo, and I certainly have to put DJ Dozier in there as one of those precocious freshmen who can who are ready to play the minute they hit the college campus. DJ was mature, poised, uh, great. Running instincts, great ability, and uh, had a, a super year for us as a freshman. I think he was the first freshman we ever had to run for a thousand yards. And once we started to, to get a little confidence back, uh, I think we, we, we played we played better. We were we were pretty good at the end of the year. And I think part of it started probably with the Alabama game. The Alabama game, we, we won, although we were hanging on. We were way ahead, 31 to 6 or something. But we hung on, and Alabama had a chance to score at the end. After Penn State played near-perfect football for three quarters, Alabama scored three times in the fourth quarter and was threatening again. Lewis in the flat, wide open. It is caught by Chandler. He's down to the 13-yard line, and there is absolutely no stopping Alabama. Hamilton, Harry Hamilton, made the tackle, but the gain is seven. The clock runs with 1.20 to play. Alabama still with two timeouts left. Time is no longer a factor. The only factor is, will Penn State have enough time to come back and get a field goal if they need one? Second down and two. Pitch wide to good. First down and goal at the Penn State six-yard line. 38 seconds to go. The clock will stop on the change of the chains. They ran the same plays they ran before. That's true when he closed a little late. Come up a little late, could have forced a little bit, but the corner was kicked out. 32 seconds, Alabama with one timeout left. Lewis, no rush at all. Look at it, in the end zone, and out of bounds. Incomplete. Second and goal. 22 seconds to play. Lewis, rush. He throws in the end zone, and it is incomplete. It was almost a touchdown to Joey Jones. Well, they put the rush on him, and it made him throw a little too soon. They might come right back to the same play. I don't, so they, I don't think they'll run it. That's why they should help out on the corner a little bit. Third and goal. Lewis. He's rushed. He gets away. He can run it in. 
He's down to the five, and he's down to the four-yard line. Alabama has one timeout left, and they take it with eight seconds. Fourth down and goal. This is it. Movement. Lewis is hit. Penn State's offside. He falls in the end zone. Incomplete. Penn State was Incomplete. Offside. Penn State will win the game. No, no. Penn State was offside. I thought the offensive line moved. Maybe. We'll see. People are on the field. I thought Penn State, unless the offensive line moved. The penalty is He's on Penn State. On Penn State. Alabama will get another chance. This is it. Pitch. No, Stop Penn State them. holds, and Penn State wins. Steve Sefter, come on a blitz. They did it. That's the same play. They ran two big plays, almost got in. I would second guess Perkins on that one. They came back to the well once too often, and Lady Luck smiled the last time on Penn State. The Crimson Tide had been ranked number three in the nation, but Penn State upset them 34-28. After a 17-6 victory at Syracuse, Penn State next had to play the number five ranked West Virginia Mountaineers, and again the Lions pulled an upset. West Virginia was undefeated. Thought this was the year they were gonna get us. Uh, they had to wait till 84 for that, but in, uh, uh, we did some things very, very well, and uh, one play that, that really was a great play was Kevin Dow's 57-yard touchdown run. He, again, Kevin had uh, turned out to be one of the premier punt return people in the country, uh, almost as good as Suffalo was. The Lions broke it open in the fourth quarter to win 41-23. At Boston College, things didn't go as well for Penn State. Doug Flutie's pass for Brian Brennan was tipped by defensive back Mark Bruhan right back to tailback Troy Stafford, who had a gift 67-yard touchdown score. The Eagles built a 21-0 lead and won 27-17. Next, Joe Paterno welcomed his alma mater, Brown, to Beaver Stadium. John Williams' 61-yard touchdown typified Penn State's big play offense in a 38-21 victory. And we beat a Notre Dame football team 34-30 uh, and had to do it in the last quarter. The lead had already changed hands five times when Penn State got the football back in the final minute. Straight. Going over the middle, wide open, Domenio. 20, 15, he's down the ball, down the nine-yard line. Deep Domenio. Two plays later, Penn State guessed an inside blitz was coming. The call was a rollout. Third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Penn State trailing by three points. I think they'll bootleg it out to the side of the two wide receivers. Slot right, Mumford is in a tailback. Here he comes. Here's the bootleg. He's got room to run. Five. Five. Touchdown, Penn State! Dutch Gray on the eight-yard bootleg. 19 seconds to play in the game. The final, Penn State 34, Notre Dame 30. The annual rivalry with Pitt, Penn State took advantage of Panther fumbles and a couple of long passes to Kenny Jackson to take a 21-10 lead. The Pitt quarterback John Congemi tossed his second and third touchdown passes of the game to Bill Wallace, and Pitt was ahead by three points with a minute 15 to play. Strang, looking, throwing over the middle of Dozier. Tries to get outside to the 40, and that will never be enough even to attempt a field goal. The gain is only six. Nobody was open downfield. It'll be third down. 16 yards to go for a first down. Craig looking, throwing deep in the sideline. It is caught by Dozier, and he's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Six seconds to play. Now, does Penn State dare try to run a play? Strang, the ball is tipped by a pit defender, and Dozier's there on the sideline to catch it. You see it's a good catch, stays in bounds and falls out of bounds.
Six seconds had inadvertently been run off the clock, so the coaches were informed that the clock was not correct. I've been involved in a lot of bizarre endings to football games, but I imagine the pit game of 83 was probably had the most bizarre ending that we've ever been involved in. Uh, the, the officials had to, had to rewind the clock. Uh, there was some confusion as to whether Dozier was out of bounds on our last drive. Uh, I knew that the I knew that the official had to remark the the the, uh, the clock. Uh, the television cameras caught me smiling on the sideline as if I knew something I didn't know. I was laughing because the fans thought the game was over, and I knew we had four or five seconds left and and, and had a chance to, to at least tie it. A lot of people have asked me, you know, you, your philosophy's always been you go for the win, and ordinarily that's true. I, I would go for the win. But in that particular game, we had about 15 or 16 yards to go. only had one play left, uh, to, 15 or 16 yards to get a touchdown. And when you're that close, it's almost impossible to get the ball in from that distance. Uh, and, and if I had had a play that I thought I had any kind of a chance to get in there, I would have. we would have used it. But uh, we didn't, and I felt... Our kids have worked so hard to, to come back, uh, had put together such a great drive. I, I, didn't want to, I, I didn't want them to come away without anything. So we went for the field goal, and uh, Nick kicked it, thank goodness. It was a bizarre ending with that, but I think we got the best we could out of it. And then we beat a fine Washington team in the lower bowl. Didn't, they, the only touchdown they got against us was on a punt return. We, we, we really played well defensively in that particular game. And so even though we struggled, in a lot of ways it was a rewarding season. Uh, it's always nice to see kids uh, come back. It's always nice to see them kind of hold hands and say, hey, come on, we can make something out of this season. Uh, we can really work at it. And, and that's the impression I have of the 82. The 1984 season was an enigma for me. Uh, at times we looked like a, we were going to be a great football team. We had started off extremely well. We beat a, a, an outstanding Iowa team, which was healthy, when we beat them out at Iowa. Then we went into the Meadowlands in Texas, annihilated us, just physically whipped us every which way. Then we came back and beat an outstanding Maryland team. And then, uh, then we lost again, and then we, we, we ended up, we'd win one, lose one. Well, we, we lost to West Virginia, came home and beat B.C. Uh, and then we ended up, of course, losing the last two to Notre Dame and Pitt and, uh, so decisively. The thing that makes me so frustrated is to, be, is to look back and look at the films of one game and then look at the films of another game, and it's almost like watching two different football teams. And that's the way the season went, up and down, up and down, as if I was playing with a yo-yo. The yo-yo started on an upswing as Rutgers came to Beaver Stadium for the season opener. Former Penn State offensive coordinator Dick Anderson was on the visitor's sideline now as the new head coach of Rutgers. He watched Lion tailback DJ Dozier get the season off to a good start. The late draw, Dozier got a hole, 35, 30, 25. Penn State Sports Medicine coordinator Jim Hochberg's son, Rusty, was the Rutgers quarterback. He kept the Scarlet Knights in the game until the Lion pass rush caused a safety. Penn State went on to win 15-12. The second game of the season was at Iowa. Late in the game, the Lions were trying to hang on to a slim lead. We played so well in spots, particularly when they, they, it was fourth and one, and they had to make the play. We made a big play. We made something happen for us in that game. This could be the football game. Two minutes and five seconds to play. Penn State leading by a field goal. Fourth down and a yard to go for a first down. 
motion. Here's a pitch wide, and it's going to be close. Harvey may have been stopped short. Penn State has held them on defense. Fourth and one, they missed it by half a yard. Penn State upset Iowa 20 to 17. Back home against William and Mary, David Clark had a big day in the Lions' 56-18 victory. The Lions were 3-0, but then they went to the Meadowlands to play Texas, hence they wasted most of its opportunities. Strang, delayed looking, play. throwing deep in the end zone, Washington's open and is overthrown. Meanwhile, Texas made the big plays. Third down, nine. Russell Hayes coming out of the game. Go boy, Bryant split wide to the right. See if Penn State comes with a blitz, or if Texas even wants to throw this deep in their territory. Here's the fake. Got a man wide open. Harris, he's got it. 50, 45, 40. They won't catch him. 20, 10, 5, touchdown. William Harris, the tight end, and he Longhorns won 28 to 3. We played Maryland. We knew we were going to be in for a tough football game. We knew Maryland had a very explosive offense, uh, and they have a very difficult defense because they play a wide tackle six and you don't see a lot of it. Uh, and I, th I really thought going into the game that this was going to be one of those bond burners, and that's the way it turned out. Penn State built a 25-11 lead with Doug Strang TV passes to Rocky Washington and Tony Mumford. But Maryland came back with a 45-yard touchdown pass, and with less than two minutes to play, Alvin Blunt pulled the Terrapins to within a point. Maryland went for the two-point conversion to win. When they went for two points, at the end of the football game, it's one of those things, you're looking up in the sky and saying, hey, one more favor, good Lord, one more. And, we, and it worked out that they, they went for it and we made a, made a good play. They used a two-point play we expected them to use, so in that sense, we, were, we, were, we felt pretty good about having our kids prepared for that play, but it was, obviously it was a big play to ball game. Penn State won 25-24. Against Alabama, however, the Lions were shut out for the first time in the regular season since 1966. Nick Cacciatano missed two first-half field goal attempts, while Alabama made field goal attempts of 53 and 23 yards in the second half. A win over Syracuse featured a 58-yard run by Dozier. Counterplay to Dozier, spin! What a move! 50, 45, 40, he's gone! They'll never catch him! 20, 50, 10! Dozier got loose again the following week at West Virginia, where the Mountaineers were in a blitz. But West Virginia would come back in the fourth quarter with Paul Woodside's 47-yard field goal and Pat Randolph's 22-yard run to take a 10-point lead. Now it was Penn State's turn to come back. There's a blitz. Draw play. Wide open to Smith. 15, 10, 5, touchdown Penn State. There are no flags. Steve Smith, a 24-yard touchdown run. 9-0-1 to play in a football game, and we've got a football game. In the final minute, quarterback John Schaefer had a final chance to move the Lions. First and 10. Schaefer, he can't have a sack here. Over the middle. It's caught at the 26. The clock will stop. 54 seconds to play. Eric Hamilton, his first catch. First and 10. Penn State at the West Virginia 26. Well, at least whatever happens, win or lose, they're finding out they got a quarterback and they're finding out they got a passing game. Absolutely. Schaefer now with 49 seconds. First and 10. Schaefer, he's rushed over the middle. West Virginia beat Penn State 17-14 for the first victory in the series since 1955. There was a lot of celebrating in Morgantown that night.
The game against Boston College was a game of big plays. The only question was, which team would get to make the last one? Draw play to Bell, first down to the 35. Room to the 40, 45, 50. He may go. The 30. He's gone. 15, 10, 5. Did they give him a touchdown? Yes, touchdown. Ken Bell. Strang. Rolling out. He's throwing deep in and it's going to be caught. Touchdown. Herb Bellamy. BC at their own 33. Big third down conversion. Flutie looking deep. Got a man wide open. It is caught. 30. 25. Darren Flutie to the 20. 15 and down. Near the 13 yard line. Dozier. 40. 35. 30. 25. 20. Three yards. Touchdown. But after all those big plays, Penn State's offense won the game by grinding away the final four minutes while Doug Flutie watched helplessly on the sidelines. The Lions upset BC 37-30. I think maybe after we beat BC and we were six and three and we've beaten three outstanding football teams in Maryland, BC and Iowa, that we that I kind of got soft. That, that maybe we were running out of gas. We were a very young football team and I started to take it easy on them in practice, and I think a, a mental softness set in, and, and uh, we just didn't play particularly well. The Yo-Yo spun down for the final two games of 1984. At Notre Dame, Irish tailback Alan Pickett scored four times in the first half, and Notre Dame stunned Penn State 44 to seven. And Pittsburgh, disappointed with their 2-7-1 record, took it out in Penn State as John Kajemi passed to Bill Walls for a pair of 29-yard touchdowns en route to a 31-11 victory. Just finished talking about the 82, 83, and 84 seasons, and in conclusion as to what happened during those three years, let me let me give you a personal feeling about the thing. The 82 season obviously was, a lot of people would say, the greatest season in Penn State's history. I'm not sure about that, but it was a year we won our national championship, and it was a culmination of a lot of work, a lot of hopes, a lot of dreams, and a lot of people just kind of let it all hang out after we did it. We came back in 83, and I. Here again, I, after we had a legitimate shot to win the national championship in 78, I didn't think we did a good job coaching in 79. That's not the case in 83. I think we just missed a little bit in 83 to having a good football team. And, but it was again the beginning of, of, of reorganizing, the beginning of putting people in the right place, uh, the beginning of trying to, 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 to regroup so that we could make another legitimate shot at a national championship run. And if you look at Penn State history, uh, we've, about every three or four years, we're right in the thick of the national championship fight. And that's about where I think we are after coming up the 84 season. So that's it for Great Moments in Penn State Football, Volume 3. For Head Coach Joe Paterno, I'm Jimmy Cephalo. Thanks and goodbye.